You know who my next guest is? Michelle Waterson. She's supposed to be fighting Angela Hill this weekend, but now she's going to be fighting her on September 12th. Michelle, how's it going? I'm amazing. How are you? I am amazing as well. Always great talking to you. I know you got a lot going on. Uh, but first, I wanted to start with the fight getting moved. Uh, how has that impacted your training? Because you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to fight on Saturday, and now that's been bumped a bit. I know you've had fights rescheduled before, but how has that impacted things? Yeah, you know, it's just, um, it's just one of those things. You know, things happen. It's been a crazy year, anyways. Um, just having to kind of adjust to all things going on, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that the. The fight was still able to happen, and it's just a couple more weeks later. We're all still um, geared up to go, so I'm I'm really excited to 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 get going in September. Excellent. Is there any you know is it top secret? Is there any particular reason why the fight was moved? Is that anything you're allowed to divulge here? I got to ask the questions, right? Well, you know, I had some I had a family member um, have have some issues, and um, they just wanted they don't want to be a part of the media, but, you know, family comes first, you know, fighting is always going to be here for me. And, um, you know, I think it's important, especially right now with everything happening to, to invest my time in my family. And, you know, gratefully, Angela was still able to take the fight, um, later on and the UFC was able to, to rebook that. But, you know, I think it's important to take care of your family and, and, and be in the, uh, be in the moment. And, and so I'm, I'm grateful the UFC was able to push that back. Sending my best uh, to to the family member, and obviously that always comes first, especially in these times with COVID. I mean, you got to be really careful about uh, you know family members and their health and everything. So glad to hear it was still kept intact. Uh, but let's talk about your last fight. I know it's never fun to talk about a loss, but that was a really close fight with you and uh, Carla Sparza. You always learn more from a loss than a win. What did you take away the most from that performance? Um, you know, it's a fight. <laughs> That's what I took away from it. Stop trying to strategize. Stop trying to win the round. Fight. Go out there and punch a person in the face and try to finish. You know, um, I, I knew I just I, I try. I think I overthought it. I try to strategize because of the type of fighter Carla was. I know that she likes to draw out the fight and then um, try to take you down a whole position. I didn't even want to give her the satisfaction of taking me down, and in doing so, uh, the fight was stale, and um, it um, it just it didn't pan out the way I thought. I thought I was able to to do enough to to win the fight by um, you know shutting down all her takedowns and and um, being able and tagging her on her way in um but it wasn't enough and like i said walking away from that i realized that at the end of the day it's a fight the point is to do damage to your opponent and i wasn't able to do that so um lesson learned we're going to go out there and do some damage so you went from fighting a former ufc champion to fighting now one of the most popular fighters in the division in angela hill you must have been stoked to get this matchup because uh it seems like you're just fighting some of the the who's who in the division right now so I keep telling people, like, I, you know, this is what I love about martial arts and um, because every time I take a fight, um, it, it, is, it, it is challenging and it is um, – that's why, that's why I continue to fight because of those challenges, because I thrive in being able to grow as a person and as a martial artist. I think any, anybody – within their lifetime should take the opportunity to do something that scares them, should take the opportunity to do something that they didn't necessarily think they could do. And, you know, since I've been signed to the UFC, every single person that I fought has, has been ranked, you know, um, outside of um, Angela Magana, who, who was my, you know, UFC debut. Um, but outside of that, everybody has been top 10. Um, and I fought, you know, three, three, three champions, um, and so uh, I'm really looking forward to this fight. I know it's going to be um, really entertaining for, for the fans. How do you feel like you match up against Angela in this fight? We know her stand up. We've seen the evolution of her game, you know, since coming from tough, going to Invicta and then coming back. Uh, how do you look at this from a style perspective? You know, stylistically, I think that we obviously all uh, see, you know, Angela has like high volume. She's like, she likes to strike. She doesn't necessarily like to take it to the ground. Um, she's, she's, she's a busy bee, you know? And so uh, like it, in, in that sense, I, I think I match up w well with her. I, I, I understand what it is to be a busy bee in the stand-up, but I also have wrestling. I also have jiu-jitsu. I also have cage work. You know, I, I feel like I'm the more well-rounded MMA fighter, and so I think that's where I'll be able to, to capitalize. Training camp. Last time we spoke, you know, it was still primarily at home, you know, training with your husband. Has that changed at all? Have things opened up a little bit in Albuquerque, or is it still pretty much the same as the last time we spoke before your last fight? 
It's definitely opened up, you know. Um, we are taking precautions because um, these, this is our livelihood and stuff like that. But again, we have to train because it is our livelihood. Um, and so, you know, everybody that comes and train gets tested, make sure that they're clean. And, and if you got the sniffles, you got something going on, you just stay home. And, and, and we try to, I think it's important to have that, that team camaraderie. It's important to have those days where you come into the gym and you're kind of nervous because your teammates, because you got your teammate the, the day before in sparring and they're, they're trying to get you this time. And those nerves are important to feel because those are the kind of nerves that you feel going into a fight. And so, um, you know, missing out on some of those nerves can definitely affect the way, um, you know, the, the fight comes out. So, uh, we're doing our best to, to, to stay safe and, um, you know, abiding by all the, the, the rules that we have to. Um, but we have we have an amazing team and, and, and we all show up for each other. Who are you getting to work with as far as bodies uh, in terms of your training camp? Well, Holly has a fight coming up in October, so I've been working with Holly. We've got a couple of – we probably have a, a good stable of, of, of pro and amateur girls out here in the 115 division, 125 division, and 135 division. Um, so we got a good stable of girls and then some up-and-comer, even, even smaller guys that, that I have been working with. It's probably good that way because then you're getting the, the fighters that are still very hungry to get to the level that you're at, right? And that's what I try to explain to people. It's like, you know – if you have the same teammates, you can kind of become stagnant. You can kind of plateau off because you begin to to recognize your 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 teammates' uh, strategies. You understand like what their go tos are. You understand if they're good at stand up. You understand if they're, and then you become friends. You don't want to hurt each other, but you get new blood in, and we get we get a circulation of people coming in from all around the world. And these people are hungry, and they wanna they wanna prove themselves. And they don't know who you are. They just know, oh, this girl fights in the UFC, and I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be where she's at. So they they come hungry, and they, you know, I always tell people when you come to Jackson's, it's not like, it's not like Finding Nemo. It's a Shark Tank. <laughs> That's a great analogy. How long have you been waiting to say that? That's a pretty good analogy. Uh, <laughs> I always tell people that because they come and it, you know, it. First of all, we're in Albuquerque, which is high elevation. So if you're not in shape. Even if you are in shape, it's different. It's a different beast because um, you go running in the foothills and it feels like you're like sucking up pennies because you're just not used to elevation. And then on top of that, we just got a row of killers just constantly, um, you know, in in the gym. And you you never know. You just never know who it is that you. They might not look like anybody, and the reason why is because you kind of become humbled pretty quickly you come in there you know you put your head down you get to work um but um, you don't come in there boastful because you get put in your place real quick now uh in terms of uh you know we talked about this sort of at the top um did, did you take like how do you go about not overtraining uh when you you know you're getting ready for a fight at a specific date and then it gets moved how do you adjust uh, you know what? I have this really cool thing that I've been doing. Uh, I have this whoop, and um, it, it, it's great because, you know, um, obviously not everything is super accurate. I can't wear it when I'm wrestling or grappling. Every morning it tells me, you know, what my strain could be, like if I got good sleep, if I was able to get good recovery, and then I can kind of gauge it from there, and, you know, if, if, if I'm – if I am in the green, then I can go hard. And if I'm in the yellow, I can still go hard. If I'm in the red, maybe I should rest. And so, you know, I think being in the game over over a decade, you kind of have to train smarter, you know, and, and, and yeah. that's what we do. But, but when we're green, we go. So that's your green light to know, hey, it's good to train. And if it's red, hey, maybe you got to, you know, stay at home for this one or just, you know, take it easy a bit, right? You don't want to overtrain, which is always uh, super important. We Things that you can do that is going to sharpen that axe um, that doesn't involve anything physically intense. But for sure, especially in fighting, you know, the, the mental the mental game is just as important. OK, so if we're not, you know, physically, you know, going hard and, and, and trying to hit that hundred, what else can we do to tax ourselves or to put ourselves in, in, in those states? We can do some mental practices. We can watch tape. We can, you know, there are, there's all sorts of things that you can do that um, – um, or that you should be doing that, that doesn't involve anything physical. How's this fight playing out on September 12th? Uh, the one thing we know with Angela, very tough to finish. Uh, I, I kind of look at this as like a three-round war. How, how are you envisioning the fight playing out? 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I feel like I had the same mentality when I went in to fight Paige Van Zandt. She was just really gritty, and I knew she, you know, she, she wanted to, to fight to the very end before I had fought Paige. She she went, on, I think, four or five rounds with Rose Namajunas before she um, eventually tapped. And um, I just had it in my head, you know, this is going to be a grinder, and we're going to go it, we're gonna go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and it really is going to be the first person to break who has the stronger will. And I, and I am willing to go in there and not break you know and so I, I know that's what it, that's what it's going to take to go in there and to get this win and and that's what I want I want the win and I want to earn the win and so I know what I have to do to go in there and get it where do you think a win would put you because you know you're kind of getting to that that spot where you're getting close to a title shot um it was a split decision so I don't imagine people look at that as like a bad loss um do you think a win here especially a finish would, would get you back in that driver's seat sort of so to speak yeah, absolutely. You know, and um, I, I feel like the strawweight division is 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 always cranking, and there is a bit of a uh, of a stall right now because you know Tatiana's injured and um, uh, Nina is is getting ready to have a baby, and so there is and and those two girls are right up the top. They're kind of like stalling, you know, the momentum of the and you know it's not their fault. Like the, those things happen, and so there's still action to be had and, and, and I'm, and I'm willing to take advantage of opportunity if it, uh, if it presents itself. Michelle, always a pleasure. Appreciate it. I know you got a million things to do. Thanks so much for the time. Anyone you want to thank, anything you want to plug, I'll give you the last word here. Well, we did just open up our the restaurant. Our we didn't even talk about this. My bad. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So yes, you invested in a restaurant. Let's quickly talk about that before we go. Yeah. Um, we're really excited. Um, you know, we invested in this restaurant before the pandemic hit and we're really excited for it to take off. And then all this stuff happened, you know, but you got to make uh, lemonade when you get lemons. And so I think it's going to, it's a great concept. Burgers or tacos, burgers and beers. You know, you can't go wrong with that. And, and we decided to invest in it because the, the chef is just an amazing chef and he has an amazing, um, uh, tastes you know so we just wanted a place where people can come together and celebrate obviously right now they can't come together dine in but um definitely if you're in the albuquerque area stop by taco 10 um the food is amazing and once everything is up and running we're going to be having lots of parties there 